Hey guys, in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about product selection and, and I have a, a bunch of other product selection videos uh, on my channel and, and certainly there, there's no shortage of product selection videos across YouTube um, and a lot of those videos say more or less the same thing uh, my, my own previous videos included um, but you know I, I have a different way of looking at product selection than most people and, and if you've watched my videos, you know, yeah, you hear a lot of the same old, same old that you hear from other people, but you also hear um, some different suggestions by me that you probably don't hear from anyone else. Uh, and, and just to give you an example of that, the biggest thing is I tell you to look around uh, with your eyes. I tell you to look for local suppliers. Um, you know, I, I don't think product selection uh, is a process that should take place uh, entirely uh, online or even uh, in the majority online. I think you uh, you can find ideas for products all around you and that you should be constantly on the lookout for products. That, that's one area that I, I differ in compared to almost anyone else you're likely to to have product selection uh, training from. But but this video is a little bit different. Um, you know, in, in going over the questions that I receive uh, and, and thinking back uh, over the seminars that I've given where I'm dealing with you know, a lot of people over a number of years, the the questions I get about product selection, they're, they're, they're kind of vague. Um, and, and I think the, the reason for that is that the, the answer is kind of vague as well. So you're going to have to bear with me on this, but if you can, if you can watch this video to the end, I, I think you're going to walk away with some, so, some, some different ways of looking at things and, and, uh, you know, I, I think you're going to have a, a different process moving forward in terms of your product selection. So, with that said, uh, you know, I, I want to jump into it and and just talk to you. I mean, we're talking in very broad, general terms here. Um, you know, if you've watched my other videos, you know that my business is really based around, um, for the most part, evergreen products, uh, and to a lesser degree, uh, seasonal products but seasonal products that I tend to sell over and over and over uh, from year to year. Um, that, that's that's a, a business model that differs from what a lot of people uh, do online, whether it's Shopify or eBay or Amazon, um, where they're looking for kind of trending products. They're looking for the next big thing. Um, you know that's that, that's not really my approach, um, and, and the, for me the reason is this: um, if I sell, uh, say, garden hoses uh, this year, uh, I know that I'm not going to sell a lot of garden hoses for the most part from probably September through March, but I know that April through August I'm going to sell a lot of garden hoses, and I'm going to do it every year. Um, while that may not be a traditional evergreen product, and that there's not uh, a, a, an ongoing market for it day in day out. It is a, a seasonal evergreen product where I know that the demand for that product will return next year and the year after and the year after. I select a different type of hose to sell one year versus another year but I'm probably going to still carry hoses every single year. I know that demand is going to be there and I, I also know how to tap into that demand. Um, there are truly evergreen products, things that you need every day uh, you needed it yesterday, you'll need it today, you'll, you'll need it tomorrow. And, and products like that fall into categories for me, I think, in terms of things like tools, um, you know, tools that carpenters might use or uh, builders, um, you know, things that businesses might need, uh, packing supplies, um, you know, coffee supplies for the office, uh, anything a business might need in order to uh, continue their operations. Uh, I think in terms of of uh, things that you may need around the house, uh, toilet paper. Uh, we're going to need that tomorrow. We're going to need it next week, next month, next year. The, the demand is is constant throughout the year. Uh, you know, food related items, uh, vitamins. Um, and in some cases, you know, when I mention vitamins, I want to point out. Uh, the advantage to selling a product like that, not necessarily vitamins, but there are a number of products now that on Amazon, uh, they offer the subscription or the recurring purchase option. 
and and that makes your life as a as a seller much much easier uh, if somebody signs on to you know receive that product on a regular recurring basis every month or every two months um, you know you just keep it flowing so you acquire that customer one time and and you're reaping the benefits over and over and over again um, you know there are a lot of opportunities when you're when you've moved away from the the trending items and from the uh, you know, kind of what's hot today kind of items, uh, the, the flash in the pan items. But for some reason, it seems like the majority of my students uh, just initially gravitate towards, you know, these trending items. But, but the other thing is this. To me, I, I watch people um, go through their process uh, looking for, uh, you know, a trending item or what they think will be the next big thing. And it honestly looks like a, a tremendous amount of work. Um, I, I'm not lazy. I, I put in work, but I prefer my, my work effort to be very directed and very focused on the goal that I have in mind. And, and in my case, the goal is to sell and to sell relatively easily uh, to people who need a product or to people that are very passionate about a product and, and to repeat that sell um, at a subsequent date. Uh, either with the same product or with, with some other associated product uh, at, at a much lower uh, cost uh, in terms of dollars and also a much lower cost in terms of effort on my part. I want this, the second and third and, uh, and subsequent sales to come to me very easily. Well, when you're dealing with a trending product, first of all, you have an element of luck. Uh, you may find a product that is yet to be discovered. And you may be in the right place at the right time, in which case, yeah, you're, you're probably going to make a good amount of money. If, if you can do all these things, you're going to make some money off of it. But uh, unless you're some type of, of clairvoyant or, or true visionary, um, your selection of a product which has yet to be discovered but will be discovered uh, during the time that you carry that product, th th there's luck involved. Um, the people that I know who have, have done this type of thing, you know, they, they are going through products at an alarming rate. Uh, they may uh, list and, and test market 20 or 30 products at a time. Uh, they spend a, a good amount of money on each product just in the testing process, just to see what type of engagement they can get, see what type of interest there is in the marketplace for this product. and. And even when everything points to a, a product that's about to take off, uh, ultimately they probably are successful maybe one out of 10 times in finding a product that really takes off and makes a lot of money. Um, the other nine out of 10 products, about half of them will lose money and about half of them will break even. Um, but, but there's an incredible amount of effort being put forward here, both in selecting the products to test uh, and setting up you know, in some cases, hundreds of ad sets to test these products, and and then constantly looking for new products to put into your your product pipeline, if you will, uh, or your product funnel. Uh, you are you are just constantly in search mode. Uh, these are the people who spend hours a day on the computer, uh, you know, always searching, always testing, and and it's a an incredible process. I mean, there's a lot of work involved here. And again, if you are the first person to discover fidget spinners, there can be a payoff. Uh, but if you're the, the 10,000th person to discover fidget spinners, um, you know, honestly, your payoff is probably sitting in boxes in your garage of thousands of fidget spinners that you ordered that you couldn't sell. Um, because when these things die, they die very quickly. Uh, it's, it's not a slow, painful death. It's, it's almost like someone turns off the lights. So, you know, if, if you're really attracted to that type of, of business model, yes, you can be successful doing it. Um, but understand from my perspective, there's a great deal of work involved there. And, and it's work that's ongoing. Tomorrow will be just as hard as today. Next week will be just as hard as today. And, and you're, you're just, you, you have entered into a process that is very much my definition of grind. You're just going to grind away at it. And, and while you may make uh, money and you might make the kind of money you're looking for, um, you know, any break in the chain, 
means that your, your income will, will kind of stop. Um, with my process where I'm looking for uh, truly evergreen products or, or products that are evergreen uh, in a seasonal way, um, you know, I pretty much know that that product is coming back. That demand is going to be there. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not a, a transient thing. Uh, I'm not going to have to go out here and, and search for customers. My customers this year will be the same people that bought from me last year. Um, and they'll be the same people that buy from me next year. It's, a, it's really a whole different way of thinking about things. And, and while some of these products, these evergreen products, and, and I, I say some of them, most of them uh, are, are not things that get you all excited. Um, you know, they're not something you're going to talk about at, you know, around the water cooler at work. Uh, you know, you're not going to be emailing your friends, hey, man, look, look at what I just found. Isn't this, isn't this a cool thing? Um, but, you know, not that I sell it, but I'm just saying, you know, toilet paper being a really good example, you know, not a lot of discussions about toilet paper probably uh, in your life, not, not many in mine, but by golly, if you run out, uh, you know, it becomes a pretty important topic. And, you know, it's something that we use uh, over and over and over again, and there's going to be a constant demand for it. Um, so, you know, again, as, as unappealing and as, as, as anti-sexy as something like that may be, uh, the demand is always there. You know, think in terms of things that you can sell uh, that, again, even if the, the demand for the, the initial product you sell is not an evergreen demand, look behind that initial product at, at associated products or clusters as I call them in other videos, but, but other associated products where there will be a constant ongoing demand. Um, and, and just, I'm going to close out the video, but I want to give you, uh, one kind of outdated, uh, example. But, uh, if you can think back just 10 years ago when people were using day timers, uh, you know, the little notebooks, basically a fancy calendar, um, these things cost hundreds of dollars. Uh, you know, there were salespeople that would go into major corporations and hold day long seminars about, uh, you know, how to use your day timer, how it can make you more productive, more effective. And then at the end of the day, they're selling you, you know, a $400 pocket calendar is what it kind of boiled down to. But, you know, you had a selection of a variety of cases and, and uh, you know, you could have metal, you could have leather, you could have all these different, different cases. But the, the real deal here is that every year you had to buy um, a, a new um, package, if you will, that contained the pages for the new year, just like you buy a new calendar. Uh, you keep your case, you just put a new insert in, put a new package in. And that was a recurring sale. Um, you know, the, the initial sale, the case, you know, hopefully that case lasted those people five or 10 years or until they bought a smartphone, which, you know, wasn't that long ago. But um, you made your money off that second and third sale because they were just built in. They were, um, you knew as long as they used this daytimer system, they were going to be, uh, you know, lifelong customers because you had the product they needed in order to continue using this tool that they counted on. So, you know, that's an example of, of something here where you, you may have an initial product, in this case, a daytimer case that, that isn't something that you're going to sell to that person every year but you have an associated product that you are going to sell to them every year or every month uh, thereafter. So take these things uh, to heart, um, you know, play around with it in your head, see how you can make, uh, you know, some, some of these ideas or some combination of these ideas work for you in your business model. Uh, again, if you're being successful selling, you know, trendier items, trinkets, um, you know, don't stop what you're doing. As long as you're making money and you're happy, that's all that really matters. But there may be some ideas here that you can borrow that will help you be more successful uh, in, in keeping your product funnel full and keeping your sales funnel full. And, you know, there may be some ideas for those of you who kind of you have my business model uh, in terms of, of selling evergreen products or seasonal evergreen products. Uh, there may be some ideas you can borrow from uh, people that have a shorter 
uh, shorter outlook on things and it might make your efforts more successful. So with that said, uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit like and subscribe and we'll see you in another video.